Good morning. Thank you for joining us. It's Palm Sunday, so let's sing praises to our Lord. church family welcome to church online hosanna hosanna you know what hosanna means hosanna means god saves us and some of you are thinking please lord save us from our houses we are stuck in our houses we are just totally stuck in here uh, but our god is still good he is on the throne i'm so glad you're here welcome to a great day of worship a great day where we worship the one true and living god you guys are amazing. I'm going to turn it over to Cammie. We have some celebration funds. Good morning, everyone. Our celebrations for today. Um, our first one is Susan Montgomery is celebrating that her dog, Wendy, has had her stitches removed from her ear and no longer has to wear the cone of shame. And our next celebration is Dirk Starkson is celebrating that his business is allowed to stay open 
and his employees' jobs are safe. And apparently, people like working on their performance cars when they're at home practicing social distancing. So that's our celebrations for today. If you would like to share one, go ahead and email our church email, vvchurchlancaster at gmail.com, and then donate through our website. And all funds that we raise through the celebration fund goes to our children's department for kids' camp scholarships. All right, Pastor Tim. All right, good morning, church family. It is good to be with you online. And just uh, wanted to thank also Chris Wall and Ron Van Arsdale for actually making sure that we can make this happen. Uh, this has been fantastic that we can come into your homes and on Facebook. We really just appreciate all the hard work that they've done to make this possible. Wanted to let you know that we continue to meet as a church family online. Uh, ladies Bible study, the Seekers class with Daryl, youth, young adults. Uh, we are continuing to meet through our Zoom sessions on a weekly basis. And so if you know the leader for your group, just contact them and they will make sure that they will send out an email link that you can uh, join those sessions and still be a part of the discipleship that takes place every week in our church. Wanted to also let you know that uh, you can continue giving online. Uh, there is a link that will be provided in the, um, in the comment section right now that you can give that way, or you can email a check to the church, however you want to do that. We appreciate that. Also, this Wednesday, the youth and young adults, we're in charge of doing the dinner at Grace Resource Center. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how that will happen. We need less food, probably only food for 60 to 70 people. But if you're able uh, to provide food or even serve, let us know. Uh, you can leave us a comment letting us know that you'd be willing to do that on this Wednesday. And we would appreciate that so much. We're going to meet there at Grace Resource Center at 5 o'clock, serve, and then leave by about 645. All right? Uh, we're going to continue with worship this morning, but let's pray first. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have just to be in uh, as a church family this morning uh, throughout the Antelope Valley. And uh, we just thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to worship you as king. And so as we continue with this service, let us be open to hearing what your spirit has for us through the worship and through the message. We thank you so much for who you are in your name. Amen. Let's continue singing this morning. Our God is amazing, sent his son to die for us and rise again to give us life. Savior's love 
for answering my prayer and giving me victory. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. Once again, good morning, church family. Today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is absolutely a great day of, of worshiping and understanding what it means that Jesus came to be our sacrifice, our advocate, our replacement. Uh, when, I, when I think of Palm Sunday, they were trying to make him king. I'll read the scripture in a minute. But there's lots of great movies about kings. I want you to think right now. What is your favorite movie that has a king in it? Take a minute. Think through it. I have lots of favorite movies with kings, but um, I'm a, I love cartoons. I read lots of, I watch lots of cartoons. One of my favorite ones with a king is Sword in the Stone. If you ever watched that movie, Sword in the Stone is absolutely amazing. The kid whose nickname is Wart. Uh, becomes king because he takes the sword out of the stone. Like, he never wanted to be king, had no desire to be king, but he came and became a great king. Now let's move on to the scripture. If you have your Bibles, turn into it. Uh, the link's going to be below for there. That's Luke chapter 19, 20, 28 through 44. Luke 19, 28 through 44 reads. I'm going to read it on my tablet. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead of them, going to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethage and Bethany at the hill called Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, say, The Lord needs it. Those who sent ahead of him went and found just as it was told. As they were untying the colt, the owner asked, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. I'll stop there for a minute. I just imagine somebody coming to my house, taking my car, and saying, The Lord needs it. I don't know. That'd be weird for me. I don't know. But this guy said, Sure, take it. So he moves on. Verse 35. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, Put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the ground. When he came near, they placed where the road goes down to Mount Olives. The whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. 
As he approached Jerusalem and saw the cities, he wept over it and said, If even you had only known this day that would bring you peace, but now is hidden from your eyes, these days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you on the ground and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming. Your sermon notes should be down below in the link in their email to you earlier this week. Uh, we're talking about Jesus as king in different areas. The first one is Jesus as creator king. Jesus, one of his greatest characteristics is he was creator. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 27. I'm going to read that to you. And God's creating. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So Jesus is God as creator. Some insight to the way I think. When I, when I picture God creating, this is going to be weird, I picture the painter Bob Ross. I see Bob Ross painting on there, going on, oh, look at the little happy trees, little fluffy clouds in the sky. I just picture God doing that, that kind of endearing creation of going through things. And when he created mankind, he goes, hmm, I'll make them look like me. And so I'm going to create them look like me. Now I'm picturing Adam with big afro. Uh, anyway, uh, he just created them. He, he just, Jesus was part of that creation. Uh, the beginning of, beginning of John, I'll read that to you. It reads this. Jesus was there in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. So Jesus was part of that creator-king process. More creation. Me, me and my younger brother, Jason, uh, we were, Mom, if you're listening to this, please don't ground me. Uh, we were not allowed uh, to really go around the block as a kid. We weren't allowed to travel around, but... One week during the summer, my brother and I decided we were going to make a fort. There was a field that was near our house. It wasn't around the block. It was about a block and a half away. And so we, through the week, through the week collected all kinds of materials to build this fort. So we collected the materials for a week, went over to the field and started building the fort. And it took us about three or four days to, to build this fort. We had a little lean-to ramp-looking thing and it had a house door in it and everything, and we had all kinds of tires and stuff for seats. It was really, really quite awesome. And so we had a fun time building it. So it took us three or four days, and we left and came back one day, and we got there later on the day because we had to wait for our mom to be distracted doing stuff so we wouldn't get caught. So we went back over there, and then we found these guys were using our, our fort as a bike ramp. As a bike ramp. I'm like, that is not how we created this fort to be used. It's not correct. And I, so I, I, I kind of had a feeling this is how God felt and we humans started doing stuff with his creation. We started messing up things and started making things being used how not they were intended to be used. And God's going, wait. So we had to create rules. Uh, all part of the creation process, yeah, you, you created to do these things. Now let's make rules. The first rule is God the job to Adam and Eve is you are to take care of this planet and to, to multiply and to, and to work. And then we kept messing things up, so he made the Ten Commandments. And so we kept going. And God cre is trying to always put his creation back how it meant to be used. So I know how God feels because my fort, and, um, my brother's fort, uh, later on in that summer, that whole fort just became a full-on bike ramp. It got totally taken over, covered over with dirt. It became awesome. We used it, and we were totally fine with it. The next line in your fill-in-the-blanks is Jesus as advocate and king. The scriptures, 1 John 2, 1 through 12. 
1 John 2, 1 through 12, and I'll read it to you. It reads this way. My dear children, I write to you that you do will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is atoning, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the world. An advocate. Um, I love that imagery of Jesus being our advocate. When I was a youth pastor back in, back in Kansas, I had a kid who got in trouble with the, the juvenile system. And so I, I was invited to go to, with his family to court on that day. And there were several court cases. The court was open. They had several cases going through that day. And one case, there was a, a five-year-old boy that was up. He made a lot of poor choices. Uh, and his psychologist came up to be his advocate for him. And, and she, were, she addressed herself, I am his advocate for today. And she told a story about his family and what's going on, and it helped explain why this boy did what he did. But she said this, which I loved. He goes, I'm not saying he didn't do the action. He says, I'm telling you, this is why he did what he did. So you can understand before you make a, a judgment. I want us to see that Jesus is that advocate for us. He understands what we have done. He, he kind of defends us to the Father. He's telling his Father, said, I understand them. I have lived with them. I came to be with them. I understand what it means to be human. God, listen to them and understand why they're doing what they're doing. He goes, I'm not saying that what they're doing is good, but I'm trying to stand in the gap for them. Also, standing in the gap is fun because every once in a while I come home, uh, I'm at work all day, and I see that something has gone crazy in the house. There's chaos going on, and I start getting into one of the kids. I'll use Kansas, for example. And so, Kansas, why did you do such and such? And every once in a while, another one of my children stands in as an advocate for Kansas. They would step in there and say, this is why Kansas did what she did. Uh, and understand the whole context, because sometimes we don't understand the whole context. And so I think Jesus is there just helping God understand the context of humanity. I think that's why he came as a human, to really understand the context we live in as humans. Jesus is our advocate. The third and final point, Jesus will be judge and king. Have you noticed all three points? He is creator king. Advocate King and Judge King. Jesus has always been King. Never once has He not been King. He just kind of changed how He rules and how it's per perceived, but He's always been in charge. So Jesus is Judge King. Turn to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, I'm going to go down to verse 11. This is what it reads Then I saw a great white throne. With, him, with who was seated on it, the, and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and, and there was no place for them. Then I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and then the death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. The death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was, shown, was thrown into the lake of fire. I like this imagery as the book that John the Revelator writes. Each of us in our life are writing a story. And one day you're going to present that story to God. You're going to tell your whole life story in this book. Everything. There's no secrets, no nothing. Everything you've done from, from good to bad to ugly to amazing to I wish nobody knew that kind of thing. It'll be bared there for the Lord to see and tell the story. And then he will judge you. This is the part where most of us don't like. We don't like being judged. 
but the judge is coming. And, and the judge is coming to say, did you live a life following what Jesus said? Do the Ten Commandments. I, have you loved your neighbor? Have you fed the poor, clothed the naked? Have you served mankind in the midst of your story? And then you'll tell your story, and then Jesus opens his book. And his book is the book of life. And the book of life has all these names written in it. And so if your name is in there, you don't get thrown to the lake of fire, the second death. So why is John Revelator sharing this story? The story is for all of us to realize that we are writing our story right now. We have a chance to change our story to be good, to get our name in the book of life. And how do you get your name in the book of life? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? As your advocate? As have you accepted that He has stepped in the gap for your sins? This is how your name gets in that book. If your name is in there. And so as I always do, I do homework. And here's the homework. It's not very much homework. It's easy. First one is to answer this question. Is Jesus king in your life? Is Jesus king in your life? Or have you replaced king yourself as king, as other things as kings? Next, 8 o'clock prayer time. Have you been working on and adding that 8 p.m. prayer time as a church? Have you set the alarm on your phone and got those done where you're participating together as a church? And last, I've been doing the Bible studies. Uh, in the link below, there's going to be the Bible study for this. It is Why Easter. Uh, I read this Bible study last week. I'm ahead of you, sorry. Uh, but it's a great Bible study. Follow that link. Join in and read this. And so I'll pray to your homework. So in just a few minutes, we're going to take communion as a church body. I like how are we going to do this? So what you're going to do in a minute, uh, Cammy is going to come up, play piano. There's going to be a screen on. And so go to your fridge and find your juice, find whatever crackers you have in the house, and we're going to take communion together as a church. So please just hold your elements. Uh, we'll take it together. I'll guide us through it. Uh, and so as Kemi plays this music, please go get your elements. On the night that Jesus would be betrayed, he gathered his closest friends, his 12 disciples, to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Usually you celebrate this with your family. So Jesus communicating to his disciples what I communicate to you today. As I look in the camera, I'm looking at you. You are my family. We are the family of God. On the table there was bread. Jesus took the bread, held it up, and said, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Also on the table, there was a cup. And this cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ spread on the door jams to save the firstborns. This cup represents where he doesn't save the firstborn, he saves everybody from their sins. Take and drink. Let's pray. Dear gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, 
Change us from the inside out. Help us to come more and more like you. Help us to realize that you are creator king, our advocate king, and our judge. Help us to live lives worthy to be called Christians. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I see the King of glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest, Palm 
Sunday. We'll see you next week, Easter Sunday, and we'll practice. He is risen. He is risen indeed. See you guys next week.